Hello friends, so this is the third video for nucleophilic substitution reaction. So today we will see what are the factors that affect uh, aliphatic nucleophilic substitution reactions. So there are total four factors, the nature of substrate, nature of the nucleophile, nature of the solvent that we are using in the reaction and obviously the nature of the living group. So come to the first point which is the nature of the substrate. So when we are talking about nature of substrate, two factors you have to keep in mind. One is electrical, another one is steric effect. Now for SN1 reaction, which is unimolecular, compared to steric effect, here electrical effect is more important. Now why it is so? Your RDS step is formation of carbocation. Carbocation carbon is tri-coordinated. But initial compound, that is the starting material, that is four coordinated. So obviously here, the coordination is decreasing. So, steric effect is not so important. But electrical effect is important because, because some positive charge is generated in the intermediate. So, obviously, if somehow you can stabilize the carbocation by some external factor, it will also increase the reaction rate because the activation energy, that is the energy difference between the starting material and the transition state that is that gap is activation energy and carbocation which is the intermediate that is very close in energy uh, close in energy to the transition state so if you can somehow stabilize the carbocation obviously the transition state energy that will also decrease as a result your activation energy that will also decrease and as a result reaction rate will increase now how we can stabilize carbocation we can stabilize carbocation by uh, increasing alkyl group attached to it which you can see in this box so here you can see that uh, in the tertiary alkyl halide there are three alkyl groups attached as you are moving towards secondary primary gradually the alkyl group number that is decreasing and in the last case that is a methyl halide there is no such alkyl group so that is why the reaction rate it is gradually falling from left hand side to right hand side so alkyl group it stabilizes the carbocation by releasing electron through inductive effect and hyperconjugative effect. Now what about SN2 that is the bimolecular reaction. In this case compared to electrical effect steric effect is more important. Why? Because if you consider initial state then if you compare the transition state Obviously, compared to initial state, now crowding increases because now the carbon is becoming pentacoordinated uh, compared to initial state, which is which is four coordinated. So obviously, steric factor you have to consider. But why we are not considering the electric effect so much? Because compared to initial state, now the central carbon there is no such excess negative charge or excess positive charge. Why? Because both the bond formation and bond breaking, both the processes are going on simultaneously. So that is why unlike SN1, there is no such excess positive charge and also there is no excess negative charge. So we will consider mostly the steric effect in this case. Now you can see in the picture that the relative rate of SN2, in the first case that is methyl group, the nucleophile can easily approach the carbon because steric hindrance is almost nil. But as we are increasing the alkyl groups, you can see from this three-dimensional green surfaces the approach of the nucleophile gradually it is becoming difficult so that is why for one degree for two degree gradually the rate is decreasing and for three degree it is zero now this molecule this is very important though it is one degree just compared with it this is also one degree neopentyl group attached this group is neopentyl so that is also one degree but still here rate is very low why? Because nucleophile cannot easily approach the carbon which is bearing the living group. So don't just blindly follow always that uh, relative rate in SN2 it will always decrease from 1 degree to 2 degree to 3 degree. Yes, that is true in general. But you also have to consider the structure. It is always better you write the structure of the substrate in detail with all the bonds in detail. If you write, then only you can uh, reach the conclusion whether it will be uh, giving high reaction rate or low reaction rate fine so that is all about nature of the substrate the second factor is nature of the entering group that is the incoming nucleophile nucleophilicity as we have discussed in the part one video 
that it is measured by how fast the nucleophile can attack at the atom that is carrying the leaving group. Now for SN1, the rate is independent of the nature of the nucleophile. But for SN2, uh, it is independent because in the rate expression there is no concentration term involved. That is the concentration term of nucleophile. But in SN2, both the concentration term of nucleophile and alkyl halide are involved. That is why the rate depends on both the concentration and the nature of the nucleophile. Now some factors we just quickly brush up uh, that we have already seen uh, in the first video. So what are the factors? The nucleophile should be small in size, small in size, then only it can approach the central carbon very easily. Then nucleophile, it should be very less electronegative because if it is less electronegative, it can easily donate the electron. And the last one is nucleophile should be strong base. Now, the last point that nucleophile should be strong base. Why we are saying so? Because in some cases, basicity and nucleophilicity, there is some correlation. But it is not always necessary, it will always exist. So when you can expect parallelism between nucleophilicity and basicity and when you will not expect it, that we will see now. So when it exists, that is I mean to say when parallelism exists. Same attacking atom, you can see in all these examples, the attacking atom is same and gradually the nucleophilicity is decreasing and basicity is also decreasing because both are correlated in this case parallelism exists now how we will decide that which are uh, that why uh, this hcoo minus it is having the least nucleophilicity always consider the corresponding acid which is hcooh just add one hydrogen here also in the extreme left if you add one hydrogen it will be methanol so if you compare methanol and formic acid formic acid is very acidic it will dissociate easily that means ACOO minus it is very stable conjugate base. But in case of methanol, MeO minus it is not so stable conjugate base. Not stable conjugate base means its attacking tendency is very high. That means nucleophilicity, basicity both are very high. Another condition is attacking atoms are from the same period. If you look at the example, Me minus that is carbon carrying negative charge, nitrogen carrying negative charge, oxygen, fluorine. So all these atoms, they are from second period. So that is why here also you can expect parallelism between nucleophilicity and basicity. Now when it do not exist, attacking atoms are from the same group. Though remember that we are talking about uh, these do not exist factor only for polar protic solvent. So attacking atoms are from the same group. For example, uh, if you consider all the halogen anions that is from group 17, their nucleophilicity and basicity completely reverse. But remember, it is only for protic solvent because in protic solvent, there is some hydrogen bonding capacity the solvent has. So that is the reason nucleophilicity and basicity, these two, it will be uh, for, it will exist only for polar protic solvent, but not for uh, polar aprotic solvent. So parallelism between nucleophilicity and basicity, it do not exist in case of uh, polar protic solvent but in polar aprotic solvent as there is no such hydrogen bonding factor that is uh, coming from the solvent so that is why nucleophilicity and basicity uh, you can expect the correlation okay now we have reached the third factor that is the polar solvent uh, or it may be non-polar solvent. Now we never talk about non-polar solvent for SN1 or SN2. Now why it is so? Because for your substrate and nucleophile to be soluble in solvent, it has to have some polarity. Because your alkyl halide, it is not uh, exactly non-polar and uh, nucleophile that are mostly salt. So how we can use non-polar solvent? That is why we never talk about non-polar solvent. We always talk about polar solvent. Now polar solvent, it may be polar protein or it may be polar aprotic. Definitions we already know in polar protic, uh, the hydrogen always attached with some electronegative atom, but not in case of polar aprotic. Now for uh, polar protein, it can donate H+, plus. it cannot donate H+. Plus. Now ionization factor, uh, it is very important for that affects the rate of a reaction and ionization power that is directly related to dielectric constant and solvation power of the solvent. 
ionization power means how fast the solvent can how fast it can promote the ionization of some compound that is the ionization power which is directly related to these two points now in this table you can see some dielectric constant values are given for your convenience okay what are very high dielectric constant value now what is solvation power solvation power means how easily the solvent can uh, solvate the anions or cations now for polar solvent it can solvent both the anions and cations but for non polar it can solvent only cations now in the next slide you will see in detail just take uh, one example of polar protic solvent here i have taken water so water it has uh, if you write the structure in this way this portion is electronegative and this portion is electropositive so if your starting material is um, r3c br so this bond will be broken this cation you will get and this anion you will get now you can see hydrogen uh, sorry water has the capacity to solvate both of them when it is the positively charged species oxygen is facing towards it but when it is the negatively charged species hydrogen is facing towards it okay but now you take one polar aprotic solvent for example here i have taken dmso that is dimethyl sulfoxide and here suppose your nucleophile you are using kcl so it has some positively charged portion which is k plus and cn minus now k plus that is uh, stabilized by all these dmso molecules towards the oxygen end because there is negative charge partial negative charge but cn minus ion unlike in case of polar aprotic solvent you can see the cyanide ion it remains relatively free and it has to be remain it should be remain in relatively free condition because then only it can act as a very good nucleophile but if you use polar aprotic solvent suppose h2o and you are using kcn then kcn also will be solvated and that will decrease the reaction rate because cyanide ion then it will be in cage uh, in the cage of the solvent uh, water so that is why the polar aprotic solvent at it can stabilize cation better uh, compared to anion so it is actually helping in case of sn2 now you can think that why the positive side that is the del plus charge carrying sulfur why it cannot stabilize cn minus now just think about sulfur positive charge end and think about hydrogen positive charge end which one will be better uh, solvating capacity to solvate a anion obviously it is h because electro neg uh, sulfur has more electro neg uh, neg negativity compared to hydrogen so obviously this del plus charge and the del plus charge over hydrogen if you compare obviously it is more on hydrogen so that is why it can stabilize anion better so polar aprotic solvent the bottom line is polar aprotic solvent it can stabilize only cation compared to anion and polar aprotic solvent it can stabilize both of them so that is why it is helping in sn1 reaction because in sn1 reaction this bond between r3c and br it must be broken very quickly then only you can get r3c plus carbocation the faster you can get carbocation the better will be the reaction rate okay so that is all about uh, solvent role the last point is nature of living group now the nature of living group it is same in case of sn1 and sn2 why it is so because in both cases sn1 and sn2 in both cases the rate expression there is the uh, the concentration of rx that is alkyl halide is mentioned and living group is x so obviously as the concentration term of rx is mentioned in the rate expression and rx means x is also there so the effect of living group it will always be same now the lg that is the living group it starts acquiring a negative charge as the transition state is reached that means uh, after it is totally removed it will carry some negative charge so if it is very electronegative it can hold the negative charge very in a very good manner so as we go from left to right on the periodic table ability to be a good living group it always increases so that is the reason halides are very good examples of living group because it can hold the negative charge because after it is removed from rx 
x now will be x minus. So if it is very electronegative, it will be helpful. Now weaker bases acts as a stronger leaving group. Weaker base means the corresponding acid is very uh, acidic. That means the conjugate base that is very stable that is weak base. So here we have uh, the order of halogen anion uh, leaving group capacity. I minus that is the maximum leaving group capacity and F minus that is the minimum leaving group capacity. Now how you will easily identify that? The corresponding acid is HI and in case of F minus the corresponding acid is HF. Now HI is very acidic compared to HF. So obviously when it will be dissociated the corresponding conjugate base it will be very stable. Now stable means that we want here then only it will act as very good living group. Fine. In the second box you can see here we have two anions. The first anion is methyl sulfonate the corresponding acid is MeSO3H and the second ion is tosylate ion the corresponding acid is toxic acid. So toxic acid and methyl sulfonic acid both are very acidic uh, molecule. So obviously the corresponding conjugate base it will be very stable and it can act as a very good living group and you can very easily understand why it is so stable because both the structures are resonance stabilized. Here we have two reaction in both the reaction our uh, attacking reagent that is NaOH that is common product is also same but our starting material that is different. Now can you guess in which case the reaction rate will be high? Is it the first one or the second one? Yes you are right it is the first one. Why? Because here the leaving group will be simply ammonia which is a neutral molecule. But in the second case your leaving group will be Br-. minus. So though halogen are good leaving group. But do not just blindly follow that. Why? Because NH3 is a neutral molecule and Br- minus, that is a negative charge carrying species. So obviously neutral that has more stability. So that is the reason in the first case the reaction rate will be high compared to the second one. Next example here we have RCH2OH our starting material and we are using the nucleophile CN- minus. our leaving group is HO- minus product is RCH2CN. Now whether this reaction will be having a high rate or not how you will understand that. See HO minus it is not very good leaving group. Now why it is so? Corresponding acid is H2 and if you compare CN minus the corresponding acid is HCN. Now among HCN and H2O CN minus that is very good uh, HCN is more acidic compared to H2O so that means CN minus it is very stable so obviously HO minus having less stability than CN minus so reaction it will not go towards forward direction it will go towards backward direction so backward reaction will be more favorable than the forward reaction fine so that is all about nature of living group I hope uh, this uh, video you will find it helpful and if it is the case then please like, subscribe and share my channel. Thank you for your time.